So I've just got back from my very first trip to the US Open and of course I took my camera with me to share the experience with you guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna rewind back to when I arrived and show you what it's like. Let's go. So if you saw my most recent video, you'll know that I actually flew into JFK Airport about a week before the US Open main draw and I was staying in Manhattan. The hotel that I was staying in was called the Intercontinental Barclay. It was actually the Players Hotel, which was really cool as during breakfast and other times during the day, we saw tons of professional tennis players. The US Open site, Flushing Meadows Corona Park, is actually around 30 to 40 minutes in a taxi from the main city in Manhattan and around 20 to 30 minutes from JFK Airport itself. Welcome to Flushing Meadows. During my stay in New York, I was lucky enough to go to the US Open twice. The first time was on the Saturday before main draw. This is called Kids Day and it's free entry and there's tons of things going on. It's pretty much a big open day for families to get involved with tennis and enjoy some exhibition matches and other big events going on around the center. What's also good about Kids Day is there are tons of professional tennis players practicing on site. So pretty much all of the outdoor courts were occupied by professional players playing practice sets. We'll check out some of those in a second. But first we'll talk a little bit about the facility. As I said, the site was based in Flushing Meadows in Corona Park and the center itself is called the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. On this site, there are 22 tennis courts in a space of around 46 acres. Three of the courts are stadium tennis courts, which without exaggerating, they are huge. The main court, Arthur Ashe, has a capacity of 23,771. To put that into perspective, Wimbledon's capacity is around 15,000, which is similar to the US Open's second court, which is called Louis Armstrong. This court has a capacity of 14,000, with its third court, the Grandstand Court, having a capacity of 8,125. During Kids Day on the Saturday, that was my opportunity to really get to grips with the site to see how big it was and where everything was before I was to come back on Monday for the main draw. Because I was only there for a couple of hours on the Saturday, I didn't get to see any of the exhibition matches, but there were tons going on. What I wanted to do was to check out some of the practices, which is one of my favorite things to do at pro tournaments anyway. But I also wanted to see Arthur Ashe Stadium, as I knew that I wasn't gonna get a chance to go there on Monday, as I only had ground tickets. When I stepped on to Arthur Ashe Stadium, the scale was quite incredible. It was less than half full, as there was a practice going on with TFO and I think it was Dimitrov, but I couldn't really see because I was so high up. But what was surprising was, although you were super high up, because the seating was quite steep, you still had a really good vision of the court. However, the players did look very small and it was quite difficult to hear the sound of the ball being struck as although it was only half full, you could hear a lot of people talking. It was kind of a buzz going around the stadium. Now, I can only imagine that this would be electrifying, especially during a night session, but also a little bit annoying if you're there to enjoy the tennis as hearing the sound of the ball being struck is a big part of it. Anyway, I thought I'd walk a lap of the stadium filming a time-lapse, which did turn out pretty cool but there's a funny story behind it. On the tier where I was walking, it was empty as everybody else was sitting below that level. So when I was filming this time-lapse, I had my arm held out to the side and I was looking at my phone so that I could make sure the court was in the center of frame but about three quarters of the way round. I didn't realize, but there were a couple of ladies walking my way. And with my arms stretched out, I managed to knock off both of their bucket hats. <laughs> Fortunately, they were both a little bit shorter than me. Otherwise I would have clotheslined them both. And don't worry, I did stop to check they were okay. And both of them were creasing up with laughter. So it was all good. If you head right up to the top of Arthur Ashe Stadium, you get a really good view of the city skyline as well. Anyway, as I mentioned, I was there to watch some practice sessions. So I headed back down to the outdoor courts. Now, practices happen on a set of practice courts normally, which have grandstand seating behind. But also, because there were no main draw matches on on this day, there were also practices going on on all of the outdoor courts. I spent most of my time watching Rublev and Fokina playing a practice match. Follow 
by Bublik playing against Ilya Ivashka. It was pretty warm, about 30 degrees Celsius, and the players were going full out. Clearly shows their level of fitness, because they were just two days out of their main draw match, and they weren't holding anything back. Just before, we headed back to make pizza with Lorenzo Mazzetti. If you're curious about that, you can check out last week's video where I talked through my week in New York. Links in the description. But yeah, just before we headed off, Venus Williams headed down to the practice courts, and the crowd went wild. I would say that if you're planning on traveling to New York to go to the US Open, it's definitely worth going a few days early so that you can head there during qualifying week or at least kids day as like I said it was a really good opportunity for me to walk around the site to get my bearings but also to see all of the exciting things that were going on if I didn't have to rush away I would have definitely spent the whole day there as it was really good fun if you've been enjoying my videos recently be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see my future ones and let me know in the comments below if there's anything specific you'd like to see so fast forward two days and it was time for the main draw, the first Monday. I got an Uber to Flushing Meadows. It cost around $60 from the hotel. And as I mentioned, I had ground tickets, so I had to queue up. When you get tickets for the US Open, they get uploaded to the app, which is really, really easy to use. I arrived at around 9.30 a.m. with play due to start at 11. And although the queue was long, it went through pretty quickly. I'd say I was walking through the queue for about 10 minutes before going through security. A couple of things to note when going through security, I was told I wasn't allowed to take any liquids in, so I had to drink my bottle of water before going through. And also they checked the size of my camera. Your camera is not allowed to be longer than 200 millimeters. The first thing that I did when I got back onto the site was headed over to the practice courts, as I knew that matches weren't due to start until 11, but there was a schedule for the practices. The cool thing about the app was there was a schedule of practice as well as matches. So if there's any player in particular that you want to watch practicing, you can head over to a court at a given time. On court 16, I was watching Vavrinka warming up with his trainer, Dario Novak. Now, I'd spoken to Dario a few times on Instagram before, as he's a really, really knowledgeable guy, and does a lot of work with anticipation, reactions, and cognitive skills. And I absolutely loved watching him warming up with Vavrinka. They were playing this fun game using volleyballs, warming up coordination and footwork, but more importantly, having fun in the lead up to the tournament. Next to these guys on court 15 was Richard Gasquet. I always love watching him play as he's got a very unique style and his backhand is a thing of beauty. Talking of beautiful backhands, a couple of courts down on court 13 was Lorenzo Musetti. Now I stayed on this court until the first round matches were due to start, as I knew that JJ Wolf was due to play against ZZ Zhang. And I had this one down to be a pretty close battle, and with JJ being American, I knew the crowd was going to be wild. And it certainly did not disappoint. We watched the first couple of sets on here before we had to head out to get some food. So here we are, we've got Arthur Ashe Stadium behind me and if you check out down there, it's the first day of the tournament, look how busy it is. One thing definitely worth noting is the cost of food on site. I had a chicken sandwich, which was basic, it wasn't incredible, it was $18 and the pasta bolognese was $27, so it's definitely not cheap. A small bottle of water was $6.50 and a large bottle of water was $8.50 which fortunately, because I had my own bottle with me, I could fill at one of the drinks fountains, so that's definitely recommended. Now, pretty much everybody in front of me in the queue was ordering a cocktail called Honey Juice. This is the US Open's signature cocktail, and it's made out of Grey Goose vodka, lemon, and topped with tennis ball-shaped melons. It looks pretty cool, but I'm not a drinker, so I didn't get one, and it has a pretty high price tag of 22 bucks. After lunch, I headed back around the site to have a little look at some of the other outdoor courts. I watched Mukova win her first round match pretty comfortably. Here was the match point. What was really noticeable about her game was not just her athleticism, but how she was hunting for every single opportunity. You can see it here demonstrated clearly on match point, how she really turned defence into attack to finish the point. She's definitely one of my favourite players to watch, and I do hope that she wins a Grand Slam soon. I also watched Fokina beat Giron. and the younger Serendulo brother beat Ilya Ivashka in a group. Oh, 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 oh. 
By this point, I checked the scores and JJ and ZZ were in a fifth set, so we headed straight back over to that court. Unfortunately, we got front row seats. This match was super physical, with both players giving it their all. After ZZ won the first two sets, JJ made a big comeback to win the next two. But after a break after the fourth set, ZZ came back onto court and played a very solid final set, beating JJ. I knew this match was close, but when I checked out my Flash Score app, I could see that 362 points were played, and at the end of the match, ZZ only won two more than JJ. It really shows how there are such fine margins in tennis, and it can be brutal sometimes. After this match, Lorenzo Musetti came on and didn't get off to the best start and ended up getting knocked out in the first round. It was really nice to watch him play as he's such a stylish player, but he just wasn't seeming to time the ball well on the day. After this, I had another lap of the side heading back to the practice courts to watch a couple of players practicing. There were tons of juniors queuing up by the practice courts waiting for the players to come off to get autographs. So if you're somebody that likes an autograph or wants a photo with a professional player, then next to the practice courts is where you need to be. Overall, I really enjoyed my experience at the US Open. If I were to compare it to the other two Grand Slams that I've been to, Wimbledon and the French Open, it's very, very different. Speaking to other people that have been there as spectators or other coaches that have been there working with players, I've had really, really mixed feedback. Some people rank US Open as their least favorite Grand Slam, whereas I've had a few that have actually rated it as their top. For me, it definitely ranks the highest when it comes to a buzzing atmosphere. When watching the JJ and ZZ match, the crowd was brilliant, really supporting both players and making a lot of noise in between points. However, this can go both ways, as if you're there to enjoy tennis, sometimes the crowd gets a little bit too excited, which affects the players negatively. Especially my experience on Arthur Ashe. Like I said, it was actually really hard to hear the ball being struck, as the fans were talking so much during the match. I would say if you're the sort of spectator that likes a bit of a show and likes to enjoy their day outside of the tennis, then the US Open is a really great Grand Slam. However, if you're a die-hard tennis fan that's there purely to enjoy tennis, I would say it's probably not the best Grand Slam for you. I would say Wimbledon probably ranks highest and then the French Open second. But personally, I had a great time, not just at the tournament, but outside the tournament, spending time in New York City itself. With so much buzz and hype around the tournament, it was a really, really exciting week. My final tip, I think I said it when I did my French Open vlog as well, is to make sure that if you have a certain player that you want to watch during any of these events, you've got to try to head to their court super early. As like in any Grand Slam, the outdoor courts tend to fill up. I think I just got super lucky when I headed back to JJ and ZZ's match that I got front row seats as somebody just happened to leave at that time. But generally, it was quite hard to get on courts. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions as it was quite difficult for me to cover absolutely everything in this vlog. But hopefully you know a little bit more about the US Open than you did before watching this video. Thanks as always for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.